If you've ever wanted to take natural, beautiful portraits and achieve that blurry background we all love, this lens might be for you. This is the brand new Sigma 50mm f1.2 DG DN Art. This is a lens that I've been waiting for from Sigma for a very long time. Now I did set up a portrait photo shoot to test out this lens and see how it performs in the real world. So I'll be showing you a lot of unedited and edited examples throughout this video. But we'll also talk about some of the specs as well as what makes this lens so special. Now Sigma did give me early access to test out this lens. I do have a working relationship with them, but this video specifically is not sponsored. All thoughts and opinions are my own. They don't get to review this video before posting. This lens is not mine to keep, and yes, unfortunately, I do have to send it back. So the Sigma 50mm f1.2, I'll be honest, I've never really been a big fan of the 50mm focal length. I've always gravitated to the 35mm, I just like that wider look, but this lens being the first 50mm I've tried in a while, I'm starting to see why so many of you swear by 50mm for portraits. Shooting with this lens, I was able to get closer to my subject and get a much more flattering look than I could with a wider lens. There's also something about this focal length that makes the photos look a lot more natural. Give me like a fake, uh, fake laugh. <laughs> Now this lens being an f1.2, you can probably guess that the majority of shots I was shooting wide open at f1.2. This is really what makes this lens so special, is its fast aperture. Look kind of up. If you like that 50 millimeter focal length and you like that insane bokeh in your portraits, this lens is everything you'd want. The bokeh and shallow depth of field you can capture with this lens is absolutely beautiful and it really makes your subject pop from the background. Look this way and look right over my shoulder. This Sigma 50mm f1.2 is surprisingly small for such a fast lens. I'm not gonna lie, before getting it, I was expecting a much bigger lens. And this is because when I first tested out the Sigma 35mm f1.2 and compared it to the f1.4 version, that video will be linked above if you wanna check that out. But the f1.2, it was so good but it was way bigger than the 1.4 version. Like, I mean, way bigger and way heavier. So when this lens came in, I was surprised to see that it's basically the same size as my Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4. And for those of you who have the Sigma 50 millimeter F 1.4, they practically made it the same size as that. The same focal length, but F 1.2. And when compared to the Sony G Master 50mm f1.2, it weighs about 40 grams lighter, coming in at 740 grams. It's actually pretty light. And in terms of size, they're practically the same. At the time of this recording, this is actually the lightest and most compact 50mm f1.2 in terms of full frame, interchangeable, autofocusing lens. The lens itself is made of metal, it's weather resistant, it has a smooth manual focusing ring, an AF-MF focusing switch, an AFL lock button, which is a custom button you can map in your camera's settings, a manual aperture ring, an aperture click switch, so you can determine whether or not you want a clicky aperture with hard stops, or a smooth aperture And lastly, it has an aperture lock switch. So if you wish to control your aperture with your camera's dials, you can just switch it into the A mode and then you can lock the aperture so you don't accidentally change it. The lens has a minimum focusing distance of 40 centimeters. It takes 72 millimeter 
filters and is available for Sony E mount and L mount for Leica, Lumix, and the Sigma FP. Get closer to it yeah. and then just and then tilt back. Now I've talked about Sigma art lenses in the past, but they just do an excellent job at build quality, image quality, and sharpness. And it's one of the main reasons why I began shooting with them from the very start. In terms of sharpness, I found this lens extremely sharp from the center to the corners, even when shooting wide open at f1.2. And you can see that in this quick sharpness test that I did going through all of the apertures. While doing this test, I also found that there's basically no distortion in this lens. The only place you might notice a tiny bit is in the corners. You can see the corner of this game board is a bit curved. I've definitely seen way worse, but enabling profile corrections in Lightroom fixes this right away. This lens has floating focusing and Sigma's HLA linear focusing motors for extremely fast autofocusing. This also helps minimize any focus breathing. And if we test it out, you can see we get little to no focus breathing with this lens. Now, typically when shooting wide open with such a fast lens, it can be hard to nail focus with such a shallow depth of field. Just kind of like keep reaching, look over that way. But shooting these portraits with the Sigma 50 millimeter F1.2 paired up with my Sony a7 IV, I did a miss focus and I practically nailed every shot even the ones where Justine was walking, walking away from me, where she had her eyes closed in situations where it'd be very hard for the autofocus to stick. But the 50 millimeter F1.2 did a really good job. The autofocusing is extremely quick and reliable. Straight on. Overall, I enjoyed shooting with the brand new Sigma 50 millimeter F1.2, and I love the portraits I was able to capture with it. The bokeh at f1.2, or the bokeh at f1.2, the fast autofocusing, sharpness, and more importantly, the small size and light weight of this lens are going to be the reasons why I end up buying this lens. Yeah, same thing, maybe a side, side profile like this. The Sigma 50 millimeter F1.2 comes in at 1399 USD or 1899 Canadian, which is about 500 to $600 cheaper than the Sony version. If you're a portrait photographer and you're looking for a fast, sharp lens that can capture amazing bokeh, has a great focal length and great autofocusing system, I think this would be a great lens for you. Let me know what you think down below though. If you have any questions, make sure to also drop them in the comments. If you found this video helpful or you just wanna support the channel, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep going, so I gotta take something to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking an ant crawling on me. There's a turtle?